Hi, this is Ryan Bizey, and today I'm going to take a look at the MTT, which was put out at the time of the 3D Phantom Menace launch. It was kind of the last really big vehicle that Hasbro put out. Obviously, at that time, they lost a little bit of money with uh, the Phantom Menace stuff there. Uh, but it's still a great vehicle, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at it today. So here we are, the MTT. It's probably... Let's be honest, one of the most boring looking vehicles as far as the large vehicles are concerned. And yet Hasbro really tried to do a lot with this. They added a lot of cool features in it. And we're going to get started with this. First of all, it came with 20 different battle droids. Four of them were poseable. They were five points of articulation. And 16 were not poseable. And I'll get to, well, they're kind of poseable. But I'll get to why they're not really poseable later. And an Obi-Wan figure. So a total of 21 figures came with this MTT. And it has all sorts of cool stuff. We'll start up here at the top. So this is the cockpit, and as you can see, I have three droids in here. These are three of the poseable ones. Uh, I'll actually show you what one of them looks like. Now, if you want, if you feel like your MTT needed more firepower, you can bring those guns out right there, um, or you can fold them in to be a little more movie accurate or fire a missile. Whoops. Um, looking into the cockpit, you can see it fits three uh, droids in there. Uh, it's got nice little stickers showing readouts and all sorts of things there. Next, we can go back to here. We have, whoops, I hit a sound. Sorry. <laughs> you get to hear it running while I'm doing this. Uh, kind of a little storage area. We'll talk about this in a minute as to what can be used in that. Uh, we can open up the side here for uh, another storage area. As you can see, I have one of the posable battle droids in here. He has five points of articulation um, with just the head, the shoulders, and the uh, hips. Um, it's got a spot to put your battle droid guns, which clearly I had one that fell out here. But you can just uh, slide them right on into there, which is kind of nice. Um, you know, and it's got, so if you want to open this up and be a more playset, you've got uh, foot pegs here to be able to put all sorts of droids there. Uh, you do have foot pegs on the top as well. And then if we flip this around, we have another opening compartment on the other side. Same on the other side. As you see, there's a bunch of guns right here. Now the front opens. I'll, I'll flip it open here if I can. Earlier it was just popping open on me. And you can see there's stuff in there, but it's not really totally right. Because what happens is we need... There we go. Press the button. I was afraid of this because I could see some battle droids have fallen out. Let me take a look at this and fix it. The process of fixing. This is the not so opposable battle droids. They've got uh, arm. They do have a head. And then their legs are uh, stationary. They do not bend. And as you can see, there's a plate on the bottom. You can attach their gun to their back in a different way. There's no backpack there, which is a little different. I'll show you why here. All right. Now that it's fixed up, let's try this. So as you can see, it motorized, it's motorized to bring out your battle droids. There are 16 battle droids there. As you saw when I showed the... <laughs> uh, as, you, as I showed, um, they're not fully articulated. They don't all have backpacks. But for the effect, it's all there that you can bring them out. As you can see, there's still sounds going on, too. <laughs> Um, now, this isn't exactly how it happens, of course, in the movie. In the movie, they're all folded up. There's two or three racks, or they fold out. You know, there's all sorts of things going on there. But for play value, it gets you the idea. Now, I usually store mine, you know, all the way in for and and have it, you know, just on the, on the Naboo battlefield like that. But, uh, you know, if you want to play with it, or obviously you can have it like this as deployed. Um, see kind of what the front looks like, uh, looking inside. Now, you can make them go back in then, too. Oh, maybe I have to fold them in myself. So let's do the rest of the sounds here. Just get the sound of it moving here. 
it, it's pretty nice. You know, this is right in line with um, all those big vehicles. So if I hit that again, it just does that, okay? That's the outbound sound. So you have to kind of fold these in. I'll show you just a minute. So you fold them back in, click them into place. Yeah, it wants me to bring, it, bring this down too. And that's kind of a protective cover that's supposed to keep the battle drive in place. Obviously, as you saw earlier, it doesn't always work as mine gummed up the system. And you can have them go right back in automatically. Um, you know, it's just a pretty, pretty hefty vehicle. Pretty nice. Lots of sounds to it. It's definitely a must-have if you're doing a Nabu battlefield uh, diorama. <laughs> Lots of sounds going on. Um, you know, it is a boring kind of brown-looking vehicle, but Hasbro, like I said, packed a lot of great features into this, and there's still a little bit more. Let me show Here, you. Hasbro started doing kind of these uh, um, mini uh, mini rig type things with. Uh, Figures to go with it and kind of uh, kind of a little battle pack type thing. This came with a blue battle droid and another Obi-Wan because we didn't have enough episode one Obi-Wans out at that time. A lot of episode one Obi-Wans. Um, but how's this little vehicle? I'm going to take this out and show you how it works. So this is the MTT droid fighter. And well, you know, it doesn't look like a whole lot. It's like, why am I even discussing this? This obviously wasn't even in the movie. Uh, it's got a couple neat features. You can remove these blasters and put them up here. Uh, it's got an opening cockpit here. Let's see. It does have an opening cockpit. There we go. Little, little cockpit there to put a droid inside of a droid, maybe. But um, what this does and what's really cool about it is that it fits right here in this top hatch. It's actually got a, a little spot for it. And you can fold it in, maybe. My wings are having problems here. Let's try that. There we go. And put that in there. Now, of course, a lot of these big vehicles, as you've seen in the ones I've shown and the ones I'm going to show, uh, most of them came with a secondary small vehicle. The, you know, the big Millennium Falcon has the escape pod. The uh, turbo tank has a little speeder bike. The Adat has a speeder bike and all that. They didn't give them one with this, but then they released it separately later on so that you can do this. Now, I think this is cool because it reminds me of my favorite mini rig from the vintage era, which is the uh, INT4, which, you know, on the package, it shows that it fits right inside the ADAT, which I always thought was really cool that they set that up as something to go with that. And obviously, you know, it's brown. It looks like it fits and everything. Um, and you can just slide this off. It's just got this little uh, deal. Just hook it right in there. So it's kind of nice to have you know, another vehicle that fits with it as an extra feature. I don't know if I mentioned this, we also have like these ladder rungs. So if you want to have like a droid or maybe a Gungan or something climbing up that, you can certainly do that. But you know, this is the MTT. Like I said, it's not the most exciting of vehicles. It's brown, big, and boxy. But um, Hasbro packed a lot of cool features into this, which was really nice to see. So that was a look at the MTT. Um, Interesting note on this vehicle is, you know, at the time, it wasn't well-received. I mean, it's not the most exciting vehicle there is. I know I wanted one when Phantom Menace came out, but, uh, you know, it was like, uh, yeah, Hasbro's not going to do that. It's not a very exciting vehicle. I remember there was a Japanese Pepsi thing I was tempted to get because it would fill that hole. But, um, you know, when this came out, I actually got it on clearance and even bought it in Oregon to get no sales tax on it. So I didn't want to pay full price, which... I mean, none of us want to really pay full price for anything, but it was nice to get a discount on this. And these got discounted and sat around for quite a while. And I know now they're a little sought after. Uh, people want them to kind of complete those big vehicles because right? Hasbro doesn't make big vehicles. Well, not in retail anymore. Um, so it's kind of interesting to, to see it that way. I thought Hasbro put a lot of great bells and whistles into this, though. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you enjoyed enough to you know like this video, to comment. Uh, if you have questions, leave them below. And especially subscribe to my pa my video, my page here, because I'm putting up lots of reviews. I'm going through all the uh, the large vehicles that Hasbro's done. I don't have too many left here. Uh, I know I've got the BMF, the uh, ADAT. I want to get the uh, Republic shuttle in there too. And there's maybe a few things I might qualify as big that aren't necessarily as big as some of these, like maybe the Big Slave 1, um, and all that sort of thing. But we'll be getting around to the, those things eventually. Uh, this is my spring break week, so I should be getting extra videos up this week. I'm hoping to have 
five or six videos up this week because if I've got time, I want to get them up. Um, so I hope you enjoyed watching this and uh, hope you can come join me next time. Thank you.